we cry, we bleed, our voice is not heard. Because what is Samoa? My name is Olivia Jenkins. I am a professional kite surfer. The thing that I really love the most about kite surfing is that all my focus is going to what I'm doing in that exact moment. And you can sort of just get into your own brain and focus on one thing at a time. And I'm sort of always on a search for that feeling. My name is Alicia Geno. I'm a computer scientist, weather specialist, and navigator for sailing boats. I've been doing this task for many years now, participating in a lot of high-level competitions, such as the America's Cup. I'm not a kite specialist at all. I'm more into boat sailing. I had to learn a lot about what are the better conditions for kite sailing. Our goal was Olivia to kite from American Samoa to Samoa in order to cross the international deadline. Weather is always unpredictable, of course, but in these islands, I would say it's even more unpredictable. Climate change is definitely influencing weather patterns. We have been talking to local people and they agree in this, this is not a conventional situation. Samoa is a very uh, small, isolated uh, place, and we are surrounded by sea, by the ocean. And we are prone to all sorts of meteorological hazards. Sea level rise, frequent occurrence of flooding, heavy rainfall events, the intensity increase of tropical cyclone. It has changed quite a lot. I think it is quite obvious. Particularly this year, it's having weather than ever, and the consistency of the sea breeze has been much weaker than we were expecting. Odd that we're getting such the rain that we're getting this week. Yes. That's abnormal. Yes, we do get uh, some rainfall intensities, but not as much intensity as we do expect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we've just come during the super rainy period of the dry season. <laughs> we had a planting season and a harvest season, but now it's no longer because of the unpredictability of fine weather and the rainy weather. Alicia, can you just give us a quick rundown in regards to the conditions that we'll be expecting tomorrow? We will start with a wind from approximately between 15, 20 knots. Travel here is that the swell will be close to two meters and On the day of the crossing, we were expecting it to be, I think, 15 to 20 knots. It was seven to 10 knots or something, which is definitely not um, ideal. When it's really light wind, you have to move the kite a lot more. And so by the end, my body was definitely pretty rocked. <laughs> We got a little puff of wind that sort of helped us along a little bit faster, like it gave me the momentum to continue on.
we met in today, getting into tomorrow together. It was really, really very emotional. Previous day would have been worse because it was lighter, and the following day would have been impossible because of the sea state. <laughs> Each 10 minutes was a mental challenge, and each 10 minutes more felt like a success. Everybody else around me felt like it was a success as well, which was really cool. And it's so light like that. So much more effort. It's cool to see like the culmination of this whole project and all the teams put together. The best part for me was to look around and see how excited everybody else was around me. There was no way that I would have been able to do this without Alicia. We expected a certain type of weather and we didn't get that, but these people are living that on a daily basis. You know, they're expecting certain weather patterns. Uh, there will be a lot of extreme events. There will be uh, very severe tropical cyclones that are coming. The increase in temperature will mean that a lot of the environment, crops, trees, they will be impacted in terms of their cycles. And these are the things that we would like to understand. Uh, understand how we will be impacted by climate change. As a Pacific Islander, the ocean is what we live up to. It's like we're drawn to it. We need our environments to survive. Like It's what we have and we need to protect that at all costs. Big fire will never happen without a spark. So in spite of the smallness and insignificance of Samoa, if there is one thing there that uh, can help the world, I think it's unity.